What a day today has been. We have been running around the city doing a whole plethora of errands. But at the same time, we took this opportunity to celebrate. And, you know, to foreshadow, you can actually probably see it on the reflection behind me. There's a 75-inch screen TV along with a Sonos soundbar, which will slowly upgrade to have an entire sound system, which is kind of funny because we have a movie theater and we chose to do this. Yeah. But Austin, could you enlighten our viewership on why this is something that we chose to do? So we've been, and it, it, it is funny, you know what, to give a little context before I get into why we do the things that we do today, I would say early on in our lives, we were pretty risk adverse. But as we matriculated through entrepreneurship, we realized that you only get so far being conservative. You only get so far playing it safe. You only get so far doing or not doing the things that come to mind. So we've progressed to start doing more of the things that we think of and when we think about it, saying, let's go do it right then, right there, as opposed to being like, mm, it sounds cool. Let me think about it. I'll come back to you in a week because that's how most people go. That's how most people do. So now when we get the idea of, hey, you know, that apartment building that we always wanted to live in, you know, that that corner corner penthouse with like the, the, the ceilings basically, I mean, the uh, windows basically to the ceiling and a pillar, the pillar and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then two and a half bathrooms and whatnot. Right. You want to go ahead and live there? I know it's going to be expensive, but you want to do it? Yeah, let's go check it out. So instead of saying no, because, of course, we're pretty much in inflation right now. Um, when that opportunity presented itself to us. We already saw the number. They were like, ah, it's kind of kind of steep, but you know what? We can make it work. Right. How do we make this work? Yeah. And then instead of taking weeks to figure that out, it literally took a week for us to tour, sign a lease, get in the apartment. That's called speed right there. Right. And when it came to the things that we had to do today, we talked about Initially, when we got to the apartment, it's like, hey, you want to get a big ass TV and a, and a sound bar for the for the crib that'll make it look so cool and whatnot. And just so you all know, we don't even watch TV like that. <laughs> but we were like, bro, that would be live, bro. We, we could do that shit. That shit would be cool. And then we we're like, shit. Hey, look, I got this opportunity to where I have some funds to where I can do this shit. Let's go do it. And we are like, okay, yeah. Next day, went and got it done. Got the fucking TV in the rain. Put it in the fucking car that we didn't even know if it would fit or not. It barely fucking fit. I was we cramped barely, up in the yeah. side of the damn we're fucking like, car. We like, this in the fucking car. Yeah, I was like, this in the car on the way back, driving it with the big ass fucking 75 inch TV. Could have died in, in the, the rain. Back, Sono speaker, all that stuff. Now it's here. Now we have it. So when I'm saying this, a lot of what I'm telling you is the glitz and the glamour. That's the cool stuff, right? But in order to get the cool stuff and in order to feel comfortable getting said cool stuff, we had to go through a lot of shit. We had to put in a lot of hours, a lot of sleepless nights. Jose, multiple times, would have damn near three days where you have a total of four hours or three hours worth of sleep in three days. So people see this and they're like, oh, man, that's cool. This is super cool, man. Y'all are doing your thing. Y'all get to do the fun shit. We only get to do little things, little fun things here and there, little cool things here and there. But most of our day and most of our days are consumed with the hard, difficult tasks. But in order to get to the long term goal, when you have those small wins, when you have those things that you can just be like, man, we talked about doing this years ago and we did it. You have to really appreciate those because those small wins are the building blocks that get you to that big win. Because it's hard for someone to go 
yeah, I'm going to keep my head down and not have any fun, zero fun, or not enjoy anything that I'm doing until I get to that big term or long term goal. It's hard for people to do that. And most people, I would say 99.9% won't be able to do it. However, an easier way to get to that goal is do the work, but along the way, find little things here and there that you can pat yourself on the back for or that you can appreciate yourself and realize that, hey, I just did that. Because if you do that, it keeps you going to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And then it'll stack up, stack up, stack up until you're finally at the top where you want to be. So, Jose, can you tell our viewership about stacking these small wins and how that is important for us? We have talked in depth about Atomic Habits. We've referenced James Clear multiple times. We've used plenty of his quotes. We've given them wonderful analogies. So I won't drill that into their heads one more time. But I will say one thing. Celebrating micro wins is not as important as having those micro wins. The celebration itself is what helps you get that motivation, that energy, and it helps you look at those wins and say, let's use this momentum and keep going faster, 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 stronger, stronger, stronger. So the celebration is a huge aspect, but I want to make it clear that your goal is not the celebration. Your goal is the micro win. As you go winning and stacking wins, no matter how small they are, your cumulative progress is going to augment itself and it is a positive feedback loop. A win is not a plus one. A win is a times two or times three or times four. There's a power of multiplicity in everything that you do. So as you continue ascending to the top, these wins are going to help you move even faster and they're going to put you in the right rooms. But in order to appreciate it, you need to set some time to celebrate sometimes. Even if it's a quick little cigar, a nice little beer, a quick bottle of wine, it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be luxurious. It doesn't need to be a steak dinner at a five-star restaurant. It can be something very small and subtle because even if, you're, even if you're not cognizant of that being positive to you, you're appreciating yourself and you're showing that appreciation. So subconsciously, you're starting to upgrade your mental status. You're starting to see yourself as a high worth or high value individual. You start seeing yourself as that CEO. You start seeing yourself as the founder. You don't see yourself as that broke person who's just trying to put things together anymore. And that mindset, and there's this huge hype around mindset, and I understand it. Because your mindset is what helps you move forward. It helps you break barriers because you have to think and grow rich. You have to think about being rich before you become rich. You have to plan. It doesn't just happen by coincidence. So Austin, you have something here that's very interesting. I don't see it completed, but I know that it's completed in your brain. So I would like you to elaborate on this because I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if I updated it yet, but just like you were talking about, you know, having a small cigarillo on our balcony. For us, that's a win. For other people, that may not be a win. But for us, knowing what we went through, that's a win. To take that small amount of time, it could just be 30 minutes out of your day to enjoy that cigarillo. Even talk shop and talk business and talk about the intricacies of the cigar and how, you know, we want to do certain things in the future. Because That's, we're, 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 you got to tell them why. Oh, we could tell them? Uh, yeah, you could. Why wouldn't you be able to tell right, them why? By so, the time this airs, will already happen. That is true. So we currently are the co-founders of a new luxurious cigar brand. And we will have our own cigars that we will be going to a different, not only Undis one country. Undisclosed locations. Different countries. To where we will get our leaves, our tobacco, all the intricacies, boxes, logos, everything from the source and bringing them back here to you to provide you with a quality, wonderfully tasting and wonderfully crafted cigar smoking experience. And what's the name of the company? I don't think I heard it. The name is Mayfiend. Ah, Mayfiend. So back to the back to the story. Yes. So even that in itself, saying that and being able to say that we have set up a business legally, an LLC is a win. 
because most people don't even do that. So you have to realize what a win is because to everyone, a win might be different. But for you, a win might be something like, okay, being able to purchase a TV or being able to, who knows, again, set up an LLC, whatever. You have to realize what that win is for you because you could go through a lot and you might only see the large goal as a win. And if you only see the large goal as a win, which it indeed is, it's the biggest win, it's the most important one. But if you only see that as a win, every step along the way, you're not going to care about, or you're not going to realize that you're heading in the right direction. And if you're doing that, you're probably operating from a standpoint of, I'm not shit. I haven't done shit. And I never will be able to do shit. I'm so far away from my goal. However, if you have those little wins and you realize what a win is to you, hiring somebody and gaining 30 minutes back in your day because you don't have to do something that they can do, that's a win. If you don't realize that that is a win to you, your day is just going to be consumed with the same amount of stress or with the same amount of pain that it would have been if you, you know, just kept that and didn't realize that it was a win. So I would like for all of you to start to be cognizant of what you do on a day to day and realize if what you're doing is productive, then that probably is a win. So even if it's something small, realize that, hey, I did this today. That's a win. <laughs> I know y'all didn't just hear that for this. This guy's crazy. But I, I'm, I'm a multitasking yeah, here because we have to. Yes, yes, yes. But if it's something small throughout your day, take the time to realize that's a win. And knowing that you accomplished something, know that you, knowing that you went to the gym, knowing that you did that extra rep, knowing that you did all of that will help you carry on to doing better the next day and the next day and the next day. So realize your wins. And once you realize your wins, it's a lot easier to stack them. And then it's easier to stack them up to the main goal. So you're over here multitasking. What exactly are you multitasking on? I was evaluating some channel analytics mm. and I had found a video that was relevant to our, so I was putting it aside ah. into a playlist so that I can watch it while I work overnight mm. because that's what we do. We work day and night. The work doesn't stop. It never stops. Can't stop. Won't stop. Nope. But <sighs> we actually have a shelf on our bookshelf that contains things that indicate milestones. We have bottles of champagne, bottles of wine, receipts, and check stubs that show us and remind us these are the sacrifices that we made, but also these are celebrations of every single milestone. Maybe the first LLC that we started the first time that we took my dad out to dinner, perhaps a celebration after a certain event or a business that was begun or our first, our first ever pay stub, right? Little things like that that we celebrate, including the receipt of this TV, and the sound bar, because that is a memory. All these little things are mementos. Now, you don't have to be materialistic to appreciate right. these things. It's the stories that they hold. Although we're not very materialistic, we like to we do like to show off things and we do enjoy the nice things there. We can live with or without them. We could have money or not have money. We're still going to be happy and we're still going to enjoy our lives. It's just a plus. It's just a bonus. It's a tool. It's a resource that we use to help those around us, to, to give back to our families, to give back to the community, to help everybody out. It's not something that we seek out just for ourselves. And that's why we keep these mementos so that we can remember the milestones. I can say, Austin, look at this bottle of Vauve. We got this bottle along with steaks that we cooked at my other place, my other place with Rochelle. Y'all don't know about yeah, Rochelle. Don't know about Rochelle. <laughs> you don't need to know about Rochelle. <laughs> Rochelle is a cockroach, but we Shit. won't talk about that. Austin might have PTSD. Yeah, big ass fucking damn. Yeah, and we celebrated the steaks with a, our first bottle of Vove. That was was that your your first? I think it was maybe your second or third. Honestly, honestly, it might have been my first because I don't think I've had one before. I've always seen about never had. 
So that bottle of Vove was, let's just say it was our first bottle of Vove with some New York strip steaks, was celebrating the beginning of one of our businesses. And so we look at that and we go, man, remember what, it, what we were like back then? And we thought X, Y, Z, and we set these milestones and we blew them out the water. We did well or we didn't do well, but at least remember how we looked, what we were talking about, how we were thinking, where we were, what our bank accounts looked like, what our interest rates looked like, what our credit cards looked like, all of these things, what our mental, the texture of our mental existence looked like, the texture of our brain. You know where I'm getting that from. And small little things like that that just really remind you and reminisce and that gives you very big perspective because a lot of times we spend so much time looking forward at where we're headed that we don't see where we've come from. We're seeing, man, I have to make so much progress from here to X amount of date versus look at the progress we've made so far. You know, looking back at when we first got into business a year ago and looking at us now is crazy. Not just on paper, but in our brains, in our physiques, in our phones, the conversations we have, the candles that we light, the location that we're at. And even this podcast is a perfect example. If you want to see an example of progression, go back to episode one, one through 10, and then 10 through like 30, where for some reason I thought it was a great idea to start recording on my phone in the front because I had to sell our camera to pay for our employees and to pay for my living expenses. Imagine. How many people are going to make that, that call, that sacrifice? And then looking back and one day, very soon hereafter, we're going to be buying more cameras to increase the production quality. Little things that along the way really just remind you where far we've come. We can look at our analytics all day and be like, man, we're not hitting the numbers that we want to hit X, Y, Z, but you can compare that to where you were in the past. And it's like Alex Hermosi says, a lot of times we want things now and we want them fast and we can't appreciate where we are. I will give you all an example. Our highest performing short has what, 9,600 views, something like that, something ridiculous. You might say, man, we don't have 9,000 subscribers though. And I'd say, yeah, that's true. But imagine a stadium full of 9,600 people. That's how many people we reached. It's a lot of people. When initially we weren't reaching like a hundred. <laughs> so when you're not reaching like a hundred early on, and then you have 9,000 views, and then your interactions start to go up on your post. You get more comments. You get more likes, even if it goes from fucking two likes to 10 or something like that. That's a big jump on, you know, an average type of level. So when you're saying, you know, you have to realize and take the time to realize where you are currently, I think... and. I would assume some other people may tell you not to do this, but I do think that every now and then it's good for you to glance back because glancing back makes you realize how far you've came. And when I say glance back, I'm not saying linger in the past. I'm not saying live in the past. I'm saying sometimes step back, take a second, think about it and think about where you were when you first started. Because a lot of people, they don't realize that they have done a decent job or that they have came a, a, a long way because they're thinking all about where they want to be. Because on the road to being a millionaire, right, one may have started out making zero dollars. Now they're making $50,000. And they think, man, I'm so far away from a million. I'm, I'm not shit. I can never do this. I'm horrible. Life sucks. I'm never going to be able to do this. I'm, I'm, I'm just a piece of shit. That's not true or not entirely true because I don't know you. But when you think about it, you're making zero and you went from zero to 50,000. So if you went from zero to one, that means that you've improved. But if you went from zero to 50,000, though 50,000 to a million is a large gap, it means that you've done something to progress yourself from earning zero to 50,000. So why can't you progress yourself from earning 50,000 to 100,000, then 100,000 to 200,000, and so on and so forth? It might take different tools for you to navigate that, 
but you have the ability to figure it out because you figured it out from zero to 50,000. And honestly, that's normally the hardest thing to do is to go from zero to one because you're going from nothing to something. So if you've been able to go from nothing to something, if you were able to lose one pound, if you were able to gain one dollar, then you have grown. So instead of just saying, man, I'm nowhere near my goal, realize that you've won slightly. You've increased your earning potential and you increased your masculinity. You, you decreased your fat. You've done something in the positive direction. So take that small win and realize if you've done it once, you can do it again. If you pulled, if you pulled the bad, the bad, you know what I'm saying, once, you could probably do it again. Easily. So that's what you have to keep in mind. And I feel like people always see everyone else on social media. Most of the time they're lying about shit. You see everyone else on social media talking about, you know, I just bought a fucking a yacht or some shit and this is their parents or some shit. But you see people like that and you're like, man, I'm nowhere close to that. But look at where you started. And sometimes look at where they started. Their their parents could be billionaires. So they started ahead of you technically. But if you started from zero and you're over here earning more and doing more than what you used to, you've won. You just have to stack those wins and continue to progress and you will eventually get there. I don't want to be real with you. Who gives a fuck what they're doing? And who gives a fuck about where they are? Mm. Say somebody has a yacht, somebody has a Lambo, somebody has a Porsche. Who gives a fuck? You might be dead broke at 35, 45, 55, and you're comparing yourself to your peers or people who you grew up with, and you're like, man, they're rich and successful. They have houses. They have rental properties. They have businesses. They have wives. They have kids. They have husbands, whatever. Who gives a fuck? They're not you. They're living their life. Live yours. And your time frame isn't theirs and theirs isn't yours. So you're not the same person. So why compare? And at the end of the day, whatever they're doing doesn't affect you. Whether they're successful or not doesn't affect you. It's only perception. You might think higher of yourself if you're higher than them, but it's only a thought. It's not reality. Right. At the end of the day, we're all human. You can level the playing field on certain aspects, but also on some aspects, there is no level playing field. At the end of the day, if they're your employer, yeah, you could talk shit all you want, but they're the one signing the front of your check and you're the one endorsing the back so you can deposit it. So understand that don't use other people as a metric for where you should be. Using other people as a standard stick to compare yourself and say, hey, these are the qualities that I have that are distinct is good. But when you're comparing actual life circumstances, it becomes dangerous, especially nowadays that we can hyper fixate and people can fine tune our perception of them by showing off and bragging and showing things that aren't true. Like Jordan Peterson says, you see the guy driving by you in the Lamborghini and you may get envious of him, but you don't know what's going through his head. Most likely he's thinking about where's the next pole that he can wrap the, the, the Lamborghini around and end it. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know the baggage that comes with the territory. You might say that's a nice car. And although I agree, right? I'll cry in my Ferrari while you cry in your Camry. That's true. But at the same time, it comes with the territory. I once had a friend of mine who was like, man, ah, I wish I was doing what you were doing. I wish I had things going and movement and this and that. And I looked at him dead in the eyes and I said, bro, you don't want this. And I said, because the amount of problems that we deal with in a day to day basis, and he looks me dead in the eyes and responds, we all have problems, Jose. And I just said, you're absolutely right. <laughs> and ended the conversation there. Because somebody who understands that there's levels to problems doesn't understand that there is a authentication period. There is a price to, play, price to pay. You have to pay. You have to ante in to the gamble. You have to do a whole plethora of things that you never expected. Ryan Holiday has a good quote where he says, all the fun decisions get made on the way up the ladder. The only decisions that the leaders get to make are the shit decisions. Mm -hmm. The never so fun decisions. Let's talk about um, who dropped the nuclear bomb. Eisenhower? Or who was it? Hang on. I believe so. Who was the president? Wait a second. Intermission. Yeah. Truman. 
So when Truman inherited the office, and I'm not a historian, so apologies, but essentially Truman had four or five giant, giant responsibilities just laid on his shoulders, along with having to make the call to drop two nuclear bombs. Do you have any idea what it's like to hop in and make four or five extremely difficult decisions where the lives of many people are on the line, along with the entire future of not just your nation, but multiple nations. That's essentially every leader. Although the stakes are different, the game is the same. It's not fun. The decisions you have to make are not easy. It's not necessarily desirable. The cars, the watches, the view, the women, the food, the cigars, the alcohol, the reputation, all that's fun. But will you sit there in the dark with the pain of those decisions in your mind at night, keeping you up? You can't eat in peace. You can't sleep in peace. You can't do anything at peace. You're working out and you're on three phones trying to fucking figure things out. And that's fine. We chose that territory and we're choosing to do it actively. But understand, when you start comparing yourself to people, you don't see what's under the hood. I could say, man, Truman had an awesome time. He was an American president. Yeah. Look at the decisions he had to make. Had to make. Imagine, imagine what his nights looked like. Imagine what his stomach felt like. You think he could digest food with all the, the indigestion that he gets from all the stress? Probably not. So. I don't know how I got there. <laughs> with that, <laughs> just like you said, though. On the way up, you get to make some fun calls. But once you get to the top, you might not have as much fun. So if we said that to you and you not knowing if it's true or not right now, you take us for you take us at our word, right? That would mean as you ascend having those small wins and realizing those small wins and taking them would probably be a lot more fruitful for you than to just save all the shit for when you get the big win. Because when you get the big win, people always forget that the more power you have, the more responsibility you have, the more is laying on your shoulders, the more things are on you for success or failure. So I'm not saying, you know, just have these small wins and just have fun right now, just to goof off and have fun. I'm definitely not saying that, but I am saying enjoy the ascent. Enjoy the process. Enjoy getting better every whatever your cadence is. Enjoy that. Enjoy the little things. As you work, because work is 99% of this shit, don't think that we're just telling you to have fun because fuck no. We're telling you to work, but enjoy the 1% every now and then. But enjoy that now because when you get to the point to where you finally succeed and you finally break through, life at the top after that big win may not be all that you think it's going to be. And that's something that we're okay with. We know once we get to the top, we are going to have to make some tough ass decisions, tougher than what we have to do now. And people are going to be coming to us for everything that you could think of. But this is the life that we chose and we're okay with that. So while we have the time and or making the time <laughs> to do these little things here and there, like smoke a cigarette on our balcony and talk about business while we have the time to do that. We're going to take that and do it because we know as that as we progress that that time may be fleeting in the future. So take those small wins, realize them and understand that as you ascend, you need those small wins to build up to the big one. The yeah, M Club podcast. Signing out. Mike, mic check. The AM Club Podcast.